This is Mika Seppälä, hello everybody. In this video I discuss uh, how to compute lengths of parametric curves. A parametric curve is defined by two functions x and y, which depend on a number t. The functions x and y define the x and the y coordinates of the points of the parametric curve. So here x t equals sine of t divided by t, y of t equals cosine of t divided by t. These two functions determine this red spiral shown in this picture. To compute the length of an arc on a parametric curve x t y t, t between a and b, we approximate this arc by straight line segments. We form the approximation so that we decompose the t interval from a to b first into subintervals of equal length by the points t0 which equals a, t1, t2 and so forth up to tn which equals b. In this decomposition we have n subintervals and since they are of equal length each tk minus tk minus 1 is simply b minus a divided by n. Now we consider the endpoints of these subintervals and the corresponding points on the red curve. We join these corresponding points on the red curve to each other by straight line segments, so that we join the point x tk minus 1, y tk minus 1, to the point x tk, y tk, for all values of k. There are n such line segments. In the computations that follow, we use the notation delta of t equals tk minus tk minus 1, which is b minus a divided by n. This quantity does not depend on k because we chose the decomposition of the interval from a to b into subintervals so that all subintervals had the same length, which is b minus a divided by n. Now consider an individual line segment corresponding to the kth subinterval. The length of this line segment is simply square root of x t k minus x t k minus 1 squared plus y t k minus y t k minus 1 squared. This is so because this is the line segment that joins the point x t k minus 1 y t k minus 1 to the point x t k y t k. Now we have to add up the lengths of these line segments and we get an approximation for the length of the arc that we have to compute and the approximation is now summation k from 1 to n of square roots of x t k minus x t k minus 1 and that's squared plus y t k minus y t k minus 1 squared. Now this is the approximation that we will next work with. We want to relate the approximation that we now have to a Riemann sum. Therefore, we rewrite the approximation, which was summation k from 1 to n square root of x t k minus x t k minus 1 squared plus y t k minus y t k minus 1 squared. We rewrite that as summation k from 1 to n square root of the quantity x t k minus x t k minus 1 divided by delta of t and that squared plus y t k minus y t k minus 1 divided by delta of t and that squared and then this square root multiplied by delta of t. When we do that, nothing changes because this delta of t's by which we have divided, we have also multiplied and these operations cancel each other. Here, the quantity delta of t was tk minus tk minus 1, which equals b minus a divided by n. Next, we observe that as n goes to the infinity, delta of t goes to 0, and the limit of x at tk, tk minus x at tk minus 1 divided by delta of t as delta of t goes to 0 is simply the derivative of x at the point tk. Likewise, the limit of y tk minus y tk minus 1 divided by delta of t as delta of t goes to 0 is the derivative of y at the point tk. Now, but this observation tells us that as n goes to the infinity, the sum that now approximates the length of this arc, summation k from 1 to n, square root of x t k minus x t k minus 1 divided by delta of t, and that squared, plus 
YTK minus YTK minus 1 divided by delta of t and that's squared. And that's square root multiplied by delta of t. That this sum has the same limit as the Riemann sum, summation k from 1 to n, square root of derivative of x at tk and that's squared plus derivative of y at tk and that's squared times delta of t. These sums have the same limit. And this latter sum is a Riemann sum for the function square root of derivative of x squared plus derivative of y squared. Therefore, the length of a parametric curve xt, yt, where t goes from a to b, is given by the integral from a to b square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. We use this arc length formula to compute the length of a circle of radius r. There is nothing new in the result as such. We know that the length is 2 times pi times r. But um, it may be of interest to see how this can be computed by using the formula for the length of a parametric curve. In order to use that formula, we first have to find a parametrization for a circle. So we do that so that uh, we consider the angle t as a parameter and we place the angle t at uh, the origin so that its right side is the positive x-axis and then the left side intersects the circle at the point x of t, y of t. Now the radius of this circle is r. Therefore the x-coordinate of this intersection point is r times cosine of t and the y-coordinate is r times sine of t by the definition of sine and cosine. This means that a parametrization of a circle of radius r is given by x of t equals r times cosine of t and y of t equals r times sine of t. And the t interval is the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Now, therefore, the length of this circle of radius r is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. xt is r times cosine of t. Therefore, x prime is minus r times sine and that squared is r squared times sine squared of t. Likewise y of t equals r times sine of t. Therefore the derivative of y of t is uh, just r times cosine of t and y of, y of t prime squared is r squared times cosine of t squared and then we take square root of this sum and uh, integrate with respect to t. But now square root of r squared times sine squared plus r squared times cosine squared is simply square root of r squared and square root of r squared is r. So this integral reduces to the integral from 0 to 2 pi of r dt. r does not depend on t and therefore this integral is simply 2 times pi times r. A quick way to compute the length of a circle of radius r. The equation x squared plus y squared and that sum squared equals x squared minus y squared is an example of a Lemniscate. gate. These are named after the Swiss mathematician Bernoulli, so this is called a Lemniscate gate of Bernoulli. This Lemniscate gate is parameterized by the functions x of t equals cosine of t divided by 1 plus sine squared of t and y of t equals sine of t times cosine of t and that divided by 1 plus sine squared of t and the t interval is from 0 to 2 pi. Now, in general, the problem of finding parametrizations for generic curves defined by polynomial equations like this one is pretty difficult. Here we simply take this uh, parametrization as given and we use that to compute the length of the Lemniscate. gate. Now, the formula for the length tells us that the length of this Lemniscate gate is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. We block the previously given expressions for x of t and y of t into this expression and we simplify and get that the integral becomes integral from 0 to 2 pi of 1 divided by 1 square root of 1 plus sine squared of t dt. And uh, this is approximately 5.244 and so forth. This integral can be expressed precisely by special functions but uh, is pretty difficult. So to compute an approximation, it is best done with a computer mathematics system. 
we conclude that the length of this red lemnis gate is approximately 5.244. The parametric curve x of t equals sine of t divided by t, y of t equals cosine of t divided by t, t from 1 to the infinity, is the red spiral shown in this picture. It is a spiral that starts from a point on the unit circle and goes to zero. The point x of t, y of t lies at the distance 1 over t from the origin. As t grows, this distance becomes smaller and approaches as its limit zero. Now, the question that uh, we want to consider is that is the length of this spiral finite? And this length is finite if the improper integral from 1 to the infinity of square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt converges. So the length of the spiral, if it is finite, is uh, the value of the improper integral from 1 to the infinity of square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. Now we plug in this expressor, we plug in place of x, we plug in sine of t divided by t. In place of y, we plug in cosine of t divided by t. We have to differentiate sine of t divided by t, and likewise we differentiate cosine of t divided by t to get x prime and y prime. And we do that, and this improper integral from 1 to the infinity of square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared dt becomes integral from 1 to the infinity of the long expression. We take square root of the sum t times cosine of t minus sine of t divided by t squared, and that's squared, plus minus t times sine of t minus cosine of t, that divided by t squared, and that quotient squared. So we take square root of this sum, we integrate from 1 to the infinity with respect to t. Now this expression under the square root seems pretty complicated, but it simplifies greatly because of properties of trigonometric functions. So expand these uh, squares, expand all these products and add up the rational expressions and you observe that the trigonometric functions cancel out because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And uh, this simplifies to the improper integral from 1 to the infinity of square root of 1 plus t squared divided by t to the fourth dt. Now, does this converge or not? We have to solve that by estimating this integral using the comparison theorem. Now, 1 plus t squared is of course greater than just t squared. So 1 plus t squared divided by t to the fourth is certainly greater than t squared divided by t to the fourth. But t squared divided by t to the fourth is just 1 divided by t squared and square root of that is just 1 divided by t. So we conclude that this expression square root of 1 plus t squared divided by t to the fourth is greater than 1 divided by t. And this, when t is positive, that is of course, and uh, larger than 1 in this case, because we integrate from 1 to the infinity. But now we know that the improper integral from 1 to the infinity of 1 divided by t dt diverges. Therefore, by the comparison theorem, we know that also the improper integral from 1 to the infinity of square root of 1 plus t squared divided by t to the fourth dt diverges. And our answer is, therefore, that the spiral x of t equals sine of t divided by t, y of t equals cosine of t divided by t, and t from 1 to the infinity is infinitely long. We complement the previous example by observing that the spiral x of t equals sine of t divided by t squared and y of t equals cosine of t divided by t squared approaches zero faster than the previous spiral. And it can be shown by precisely the same computation that this spiral, when t goes from 1 to the infinity, has a finite length and this finite length can be computed. It is square root of 5 divided by 2 plus hyperbolic arctangent of 2 times square root of 5 divided by 5 
and that divided by 4. Therefore, these spirals may have also finite lengths, even though they appear to turn around the origin infinitely many times. As a summary, I conclude that the length of a parametric curve parameterized by x of t and y of t when t is between a and b is the integral from a to b square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. This is the length formula for parametric curves.